This video is brought to you by Sailrite. Visit sailrite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. In a future video coming soon, we're going to be reupholstering this sleeper sofa. But in this video, we're going to show you how to reupholster the cushions for this sofa. The sofa cushions vary in style, so let's go over the type of cushion that we will be sewing up. Here's Cindy to explain our cushion design. So there's no cording or anything. These tucks right here will shape the cushions. The band goes all the way around the side, the back, and then over on the other side. So it's a fairly uh, simple cushion to make. We'll be disassembling our old cushion to make a pattern for the new cushion fabric. You can see all three cushions are the same size, so I only need to take one apart to make all three of them. Since the fabric we're upholstering with has a stripe, we need to match the cushion up to the sofa's stripe. Okay. In order to get this cushion, uh, the stripe going across the cushion the best that we can on this, I'm going to hold the cushion up where it's going to go and mark a uh, stripe. Maybe this yellow one. And kind of eyeball it into the same place on my cushion. It may not be perfect, but it should be close. Now we can remove the stitching holding the cushion together. This is a tedious task. Here we're using thread nippers, and here we're using scissors. You can also use a seam ripper. And notice that Cindy is being careful not to cut the fabric, but only the threads that have sewn the fabric panels together. Our foam is still in great shape, so we're going to reuse it. But if you need foam, Sarite carries it. Now we'll pattern the plate, which is actually the top, front, and back side of our cushion. This fabric has been seamed to make this cushion long enough. We won't need to do that because our pattern is gonna lay up the roll in our, uh, so we don't need to add this piece on. We can cut it all in one piece. So I'm not gonna take these pieces off of the ends of the cushion. For our sofa cushions, we've chosen to use a Sumbrella upholstery fabric from the Sayerite line. So I have my pin right here on the yellow stripe that I marked the corresponding stripe on the sofa. So I'm just going to put a few pins in this and then cut it. Our sofa has already been upholstered and we used it earlier to match up the stripes on this patterned fabric so that our cushions will match up with the upholstered sofa. Here Cindy is using multi-use pins to pin the old fabric to the new fabric. She will fold the fabric back in half so that she only has to pattern half at a time. Then when she cuts out the new fabric, she'll fold it up and pattern the second half. Watch. I'm gonna fold this in half this way and put a pin or a couple pins up here at the halfway point. And then I can cut out this half of it and then fold it on itself to cut out the rest of it. These two pins at the top are placed in the new fabric, not the old fabric. Now we'll use scissors and cut along the edge of the old fabric, cutting out our new fabric. We need to make sure that any seam allowance, it's usually a half inch or so, is folded back so we're cutting along the raw edge of the old fabric to make our new fabric. And before I take the piece off to fold it up in half, I'm going to mark these two little um, tucks in the side of the cushion. When creating notches like this with scissors, don't go deeper than about a quarter inch into the fabric, so we don't go into the seam allowance. On both sides. Here's a look back at our cushion. These tucks, our pleats, give the front of the cushion shape. And here Cindy is cutting into the opposite side at each one of those tucks. Now the multi-use pins can be removed, except for don't remove the multi-use pins that indicate where the halfway point is on the new fabric. This can be set aside and we'll pull our fabric down. Those two pins at the top are still there. Cindy will fold the fabric back on top of itself so outside surfaces are facing each other and she will make sure that those two pins in the middle position are right on the fold that she's creating now. And she'll also make sure that her stripes are horizontal. They won't match up to the stripes on the underside, but they should be straight across. Then she'll pin it in place. Since this fabric is rather flat, we only need to pin it at the four corners. We did not show it, but we also made the clips in this side to match the top. 
Make sure you cut your clips on the other side also after you fold it and cut it. Now we'll concentrate on the banding or boxing and the zipper plaque. That's next. Now the zipper is um, made in three pieces with the zipper in the middle and a band on each side. I'm going to take this apart so that I can construct the zipper. Again, Cindy will not cut the fabric, but rather the stitching holding these pieces together. So I'll need to cut two of these for each cushion, and I'm going to add a few inches, maybe three inches to mine, so that it folds over on the ends of the zipper, and then you don't have so much stress when you're stuffing the cushion on the ends of the zipper. Here's a look ahead at the finished cushion. You'll notice the zipper tucks into a pocket. That's what Cindy is referring to when she's saying she's going to add three extra inches to this banding or boxing so that the three inches will create a pocket for the end of the zipper to tuck into. She'll pin this in place with multi-use pins and then cut around the perimeter with scissors. No reason to use a hot knife. There will be a half inch seam allowance added to this so we don't have to worry about unraveling. Typically when cushions are made we don't have to worry about matching up the pattern. Uh, it's almost impossible to do so. But we do have to ensure that the panel that we're patterning is laying horizontal to the stripes or the pattern. So I can use this one to cut all the rest of them and I'll need six of these. We're making three cushions. We only need two of these per each cushion. So that's what she's referring to when she says six of them. She's going to use this one she just cut out to make the second one for the opposite side of this cushion. So there's the two bands and then I'm going to make a zipper to go in the center of these two pieces. I'm not going to take the zipper apart to make the new one. I'm going to just measure it. So it is 31 inches long. And there'll be two pieces that are four inches. This part is three inches and I'm going to add an inch to tuck under to stitch the zipper to. So two pieces at 31 by four. While she's cutting this zipper plaque to size, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about fabric. We've chosen to use a Sumbrella upholstery fabric from the Sayerite line or collection. But you will find hundreds, if not thousands, of upholstery fabrics in multiple brands that will work great for a reupholstery job like this. Check it out at the Sayerite website. Now I'm ready to install the zipper in between these two pieces and then I'll add the bands to each end. And I'm ready to sew the, the zipper into the band piece and I want to turn under one inch. I use this guide on the table and turn under an inch and then um, I should be able to use the stripe to line it up the rest of the way down. Um, you can pin it if you want to. We're using a number five YKK coil zipper for this application. This is a continuous length zipper and we will add a zipper slider to the zipper after we've sewn it to the two bands on the outer edge. And notice that Cindy is carefully folding the fabric uh, following the pattern of the fabric so that it is folded approximately one inch under and the fold is directly in the middle of the zipper's teeth as she sews. It's at the beginning and the end she does some reversing to lock the stitch in place. Just trim the zipper off even with your fabric and add the other side. Again, she's creating a one inch hem here. She uses the edge of the table to measure that one inch hem. And then this one inch hem is laid so that it's directly up against the fold of the opposite side. The presser foot is riding along the zipper's teeth. So that places the stitch approximately a quarter inch away from the zipper's teeth. We're sewing into the zipper's flange. Again, she's carefully folding the zipper as she sews. When she gets to the other end, she'll do some reversing to lock the stitch in place. Do not forget to install the zipper slider. Here Cindy is using the slider and she's making sure that the slider puller is facing the outside of the fabric. She starts with the skinny end uh, feeding in backwards and the fat end is facing out and she pulls the zipper apart as she pushes the slider on. And now I can add the zipper to the middle of my two band pieces. And I'll use a piece of uh, scrap fabric as my zipper stop on each end. Outside surfaces are facing each other. 
The zipper is unzipped at the end. The slider is very close to that end, but it is unzipped and the slider is out of the way. She will start sewing a half inch from the raw edges of the fabric where they're matched up, but before she reaches the zipper, she'll place that scrap piece of fabric folded in half so the fold is facing in towards the length of the zipper and sew directly through that and the zipper, securing the end of the zipper well. She'll do the same thing to the opposite end, adding on the band there as well. Outside surfaces must face each other. She flips it here so that she can actually look at the uh, zipper's side. Uh, even though it's the same process, it's just a little bit easier to have the zipper up. And that also affords us putting on the zipper stop. Our banding or boxing with zipper plaque is now complete. Along the front of our cushion there are tucks or pleats that help to give it shape. That's next. Okay, here's the four clips that I put in the side of the cushion for the tuck, so I'm going to go ahead and put those in now. You may want to go back to one of the cushions that haven't been torn apart and look at those clips or tucks. Notice that they are tucked forward towards the front of the cushion. Here's a look ahead at our finished cushion. You will need to duplicate that when sewing these into the plate. Think of the center of this length of fabric as our forward edge. Notice Cindy folds the pleat or the tuck forward towards that center location here for these two tucks. Now the sewing machine is basically at the center position or the forward edge of the cushion. So notice the tucks go the opposite direction here. So two tucks at the top and two tucks at the bottom, all facing in towards the center of the cushion or forward edge. Sewing the tucks in now, before we sew the banding on, makes it so we don't have to worry about it in a later step. We need to do that on both sides. These tucks or pleats are not necessarily required. It's just the style of the way that this cushion was made on the sofa. So they don't have to be put in if you don't want. The process is the same, so we're gonna skip ahead. Next, we'll sew the plate and the boxing together. Um, I'm gonna fold, the, this is the back of the cushion in half and mark the clip in the center so I can get the zipper centered. And I'm gonna do that on both ends. So this is the plate and she is putting a clip at the forward and the back edge of this plate, folding it directly in half. And then I'm also gonna do it on the zipper folding the zipper in half and clipping on each side. When placing these clips in the fabric, make sure again that you do not place the clip deeper than about a quarter inch so it does not go into the seam allowance, which is a half inch. I'm gonna do the same at the end of the cushion, put a clip in the center, or the end of the band, I mean. The band is basically the boxing. It can be called band or boxing. <laughs> and I'm also gonna fold the cushion in half and match the tucks up and put a clip in between those. So again, this is the plate and she's putting a clip at the forward edge of the plate between the tucks. There are two tucks on top and two tucks on the bottom. So that gives me reference points all the way around the cushion to make sure the band is in the right place. Now Cindy lays the plate so that the uh, outside surface is facing up and she'll lay the banding or boxing so that its outside surface is facing down. So outside surfaces are facing each other. She finds the clip at the middle of the zipper plaque and the clip at the back edge of the plate, matches those up and starts sewing around the perimeter a half inch from the raw edge of the fabric. We have been sewing this cushion with the Sayrite Ultrafeed LS1 sewing machine and it is set into the Sayrite industrial tabletop with the workhorse servo motor. Make a clip here at the corner so that this will take the corner for you. 
The clip will allow the fabric to take the turn. We bury the needle at the corner, lift the presser foot, rotate the fabric on the needle, lower the presser foot, and then continue to sew. I'm only going to sew here about an inch or an inch and a half because remember I allowed enough for this piece to fold up under here to protect the end of the zipper. And I don't know exactly how much that is until I sew the rest of it on. So I'm going to stop stitching right there and then come down here and match the center of my band to the center mark here. Cindy matches up the notch that she placed in the banding or boxing with the notch that was placed in the plate and then pins it in place. And then I'm going to stitch it back to the stitching that I just stopped and I'll be able to see where I can fold that band. The front of the cushion has those pleats or tucks. They've already been sewn in so we don't have to worry about it now. But we also have to round the front edge of the cushion. Uh, notice that she's sewing right inside of where she's sewed those tucks in place so that stitching that we sewed earlier is not visible because it'll be on the inside of the cushion. A second advantage to having the boxing or the banding too long, the three extra inches to create the nice beautiful pocket, is that you don't have to worry about the length that you cut your boxing. It will be too long, but the extra length can be sewn into that pocket, so you'll never have to worry about it ever being too short. So you can see right here I have too much band and too much zipper. This is where I intended to fold it like this to make a little pocket to protect the end of the zipper. You'll notice that Cindy does not do any reversing to lock the stitch in place at the beginning and the end of her sewing here. Instead, she plans to sew a few inches over previous stitches. And that is kind of risky, as thread ends may come undone. We recommend reversing at the beginning and end of each one of your stitches. So that's the extra that I added right there. I'm going to start back here at the front of the cushion where the tucks are and go the other direction. So this is the forward edge of the cushion where the tucks are. She begins sewing a few inches over her previous stitching that ended there. No reversing is done, but we recommend you do that. We've decided to show this entire process and not cut any of this film out. However, there will be times when we show it in double time. Here I'm going to fold the zipper back on itself and make a clip out here so that my corners match up. And I know that that clip needs to land on this corner and that gives me the depth of my fold up here. another clip at this corner and do the same process on this side where I stop about an inch or an inch and a half down and go out to the end and match up the centers out here. So again, this is the forward edge, and she's matching up the marks and pinning them. Same process. And then sew back to the area where I just stopped. And here's the fold that we created. So 
So go back to the front of the cushion where your tucks are. And go the other direction and go towards the fold again. Fold this seam back on itself and put my clip out on this side so I can match up my corners. And here's the fold on this side of the seam. And now, once she rounds this corner, she has about three or so inches, and she'll run into the previous stitching. Do a little bit of reversing here, and you are done. And you've made it all the way around your cushion. Now she will slide the slider back. Remember, the cushion is wrong side out right now. And she will put her hand inside and turn the cushion right side out. It's ready for stuffing with the foam. If your foam is not in good shape, you'll find a large selection of high density foams that are available at Sailrite. If it's in good shape, you can reuse it. We're gonna reuse our foam. So your zipper pull will hide underneath there and that will protect the end of your zipper. Stuffing the cushion with the foam is next. The zipper's opening is large enough that it should be fairly easy to reinsert the foam. So Cindy's just going to start pushing the foam into the cushion. When the foam is inserted all the way into the cushion cover, it is important that you insert your hand inside the cushion cover and work the foam into the corners of the cushion cover. Inserting foam into a cushion cover is a lot like wrestling an alligator, but be patient and continue stuffing until it's all inserted. Once it is, the cushion will come to life. Once Cindy's happy with the way the cushion looks, you need to look it over carefully to make sure everything's stuffed into the corners just the way you want it. Then she can close up the zipper's opening. Making a cushion with a pocket that the, the zipper can zip into, like Cindy has done here, makes the zipper look great and also hides the slider. So that is something that you should consider when you make your next cushion. Our cushion is now complete. We need to make uh, two more for this sofa, but the process is exactly the same for all of them. Coming up next is the materials list and the tools that we used to make this sofa cushion. Visit the Sayrite website and you'll find thousands of decor and upholstery fabrics that'll look great on upholstered furniture like this. As you can see, there are not many materials that are required to make a cushion. We're reusing the foam, but if you need that, you can check that out at the Sayrite website as well. Here's a look at the cushions on the upholstered sofa sleeper. Again, a sofa sleeper reupholstery project is coming soon. Be sure to look for it at the Sayrite website or on the Sayrite YouTube channel. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sayrite, thanks for watching.